بحث ایران در پارلمان انگلیس وزیر خارجه دومینیک راب 25 سپتامبر 2019 دومینیک راب رژیم ایران نمیتواند مسیری را که می رود ادامه دهد بدون اینکه عواقب مهمی برایش داشته باشد رئیس کمیته امور خارجه پارلمان انگلستان رژیم ایران یک متجاوز به مردم سراسر منطقه است تام I welcome very much in my right honourable friend's statement on Iran and the clarity of the position that he has set forward. It's important that we remember that Iran has been an aggressor not just to British dual nationals but to people around the region, uh, sponsoring in many ways the invasion of Syria and the violence that has caused millions of people to be displaced from their homes and hundreds of thousands to be killed. Can he agree with me that the decision recently of the Iranian government to put further fuel onto that fire by sailing the Grace One into Syrian waters is simply a further confirmation of the terrible regime that is breaking international rules at every turn. I thank uh, the right on gentleman, the chairman of the select committee. He's absolutely right uh, that the um, uh, behaviour both in relation to the Senator Imperial but also Grace One is uh, contrary to international good, in particular in terms of uh, breaching sanctions on Syria and supporting the Assad regime, but also in terms of the absolutely explicit assurances that were given to the United Kingdom that that, that wouldn't happen. Dr. Liam Fox, as my right honourable friend knows, I because of the financial front loading which has enabled Iran to finance international terrorism and, as he said, the lack of restraint on Iran's regional destabilisations. If Iran continues to be in breach of the JCPOA, as they are, when they say they will continue and accelerate uranium enrichment, will the UK, under the agreement, uh, trigger the process that would result in the snapback of UN sanctions? Well, I thank my right honourable friend. Um, I share some of his concerns in relation to the JCPOA. Uh, it's clear that Iran cannot continue to go down the path uh, that it's on without s significant consequences. We expect Iran to live up to its responsibilities under international human rights law, under the, under the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations, and release uh, Nazanin and the other dual national cases without delay. They are being held unlawfully, and it is, there's no bargaining with Iran. It must live up to its international commitments, and it must do so without delay. John Woodcock. Speaker, a, a number of my colleagues and I were able to visit Saudi Arabia this week and see the Abcake, uh, Abcake facility and be in absolutely no doubt that the very precise damage which is done to it was conducted by the Iranians. But can he assure us now from the dispatch box, there is no question that the bad behaviour of the Iranians will be rewarded and that actually we should be looking to be in step with the United States at this vital time. We are close to certainty that Iran was responsible. It is in, implausible and, in, and lacking credibility for it to be suggested that the attacks came from the Houthi rebels. We certainly will coordinate with the United States as our closest military and security ally, but as I have said already, what actually we need is to send the broadest uh, international response and, and signal to Iran if we're going to have the greatest degree uh, of impact on its behaviour in the future, because Iran is relying on splitting, splitting and splintering the West and indeed the other countries that it will fall back and try and uh, engage in partnership and alliance with uh, as, it, uh, as its isolation increases. Mary Robinson. My right honourable friend recognises the importance of ensuring that Iran never gains access to nuclear weapons. However, over recent months, Iran has deliberately breached the terms of the JCPO nuclear, uh, a nuclear deal, including enriching uh, uranium, taking it closer to being able to produce those nuclear weapons. Does he agree with me that, and share my concerns that Iran will continue down this path unless it encounters a strong and united front from the West? John Whittingdale. Uh, may I strongly welcome my right honourable friend's continued championing of the cause of media freedom, on which Iran's record is one of the worst in the world. In particular, will he continue to press Iran? This week at the UN General Assembly, the UK will be hosting uh, an event on media freedom uh, and also uh, a separate event in relation to Iran's human rights records. So I can give them reassurance that in both of those key areas, we are championing not just on a bilateral basis, but on a multilateral basis, all of those issues that he, uh, he's concerned about. George Howard. 
Can I, uh, Mr. Speaker, agree with the right honourable gentleman about the importance of ensuring that Iran never gains access to nuclear weapons? And can he give us his assessment as to how long it is likely to take before they achieve that capability? Speaker, um, Iran's actions are making war more likely in the Middle East. Bases in Syria, arms for Hezbollah in Lebanon, and arms for Hamas in Gaza. What is the Secretary of State doing to address these issues which threaten the peace of the whole region? Well, there are a whole range of sanctions uh, on Iran and uh, uh, the EU and the UK implementing legislation for the, for the EU regime. Uh, she, she's absolutely right to refer to all of the proxies by which Iran tries to exert its influence in an aggressive and belligerent way. And, and the most important thing, as well as looking at sanctions, is working with the widest uh, range of international support, including all permanent members of the UN Security Council, to live up to their responsibilities to uh, put an end to this aggressive behaviour. Mr. Stephen Crabb. Mr. Speaker, does the Foreign Secretary also acknowledge that there are tens of thousands of British citizens working in Saudi Arabia and living now with greater fear, greater risk for their lives as a result of Iranian backed attacks on Saudi Arabia as, as a consequence of their thuggish behaviour? So, what can the, the Foreign Secretary tell the House this afternoon to show that he is really determined? That, that Iran's irresponsible behaviour. Gareth Johnson. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, does the Secretary of State share my frustrations that, despite categorical assurances from the Iranian government, the Grace One tanker that was seized in Gibraltar headed on its way to Syria despite the promises that he gave? And does he agree with me that this is just an another example of why the Iranian government is losing respect right around the world? Honourable friend is absolutely right. Uh, I've explained this to uh, the Iranian government at, at every level, and the reality is, if assurances are given, clear and unequivocal assurances and they're broken, it only goes to decrease trust and reduce and erode confidence uh, in Iran and its ability to live up to its responsibilities. And that can only taint its reputation and delay the point at which it can come in from the international cold. Mr Jones, there are a hundred sea mines in the Red Sea that have been found by the Houthis, Iranian manufactured. If they were to hit an oil tanker carrying two million barrels of oil, it will be the worst environmental crisis ever. When is this government going to step up to the plate and deal with the Islamist terrorists in Yemen? Daniel Kaczynski. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Foreign Secretary was correct to highlight in the statement the appalling attacks on Aramco and Iran's meddling in Yemen. Will he also acknowledge that over the last few years there have been growing allegations of Iranian interference in Bahrain, Iraq, Syria, and of course the funding of Hezbollah in Lebanon? Will he focus on these allegations equally and the effects it's having on those regional partners? My honourable friend is absolutely right that we need to all of the uh, destabilising activities that is, Iran is conducting through its proxies in the region, and that uh, looking at one or other issue without looking at it in the whole is missing the big picture. Stuart Malcolm McDonald. Mr Speaker, two years ago, the government concluded that Iran was responsible for a cyber attack on this very house. Can I ask him what assessment the Foreign Office has made of the current threat of cyber attacks from the government of Iran? I think Iran is clearly trying to exploit all of the, the potential avenues for uh, exerting its influence and power in the region. That isn't just military in the way we saw with Aramco, but also in relation to cyber. And we are making sure that we've got uh, the best uh, set of uh, technological e equipment and uh, resources to make sure we can defend ourselves. And also, again, that's something where we need to work with our international partners on. Matthew Alper. Speaker, it's four years since the JCPOA was implemented, and many of us were very much against it at that time. But since that occasion, we've seen Iran become more belligerent, not only engaging in attacks against our nationals, but also harassing our, our fleets and transport. in cyber attacks even against this parliament itself does the foreign secretary really believe this is a country that wants to engage with the international community uh, honorable friend makes the point very powerfully iran is giving the international community certainly the united kingdom 
uh, and in relation to um, uh, the Grace One episode, the very clear message that it doesn't live up.